Welcome to Flash Tracks Woodworking. A volunteer co-worker at Habitat for Humanity had asked me to make a donation box for Alliance Club. He had seen my work using a laser attachment for my CNC wood router and wanted some specific lion's head artwork to be included on the donation box lid in addition to the donation slot itself. I've been wanting to do a video tutorial on this inlay technique I've been using successfully over the last several years, so I decided to dress up the box with this black walnut inlay and maple. So, the focus of this video will be on the inlay technique on an otherwise fairly simple box. However, there is one other trick or technique I want to demonstrate. I want to provide some level of security, since this box could contain some cash, which should not be too easily accessible. To accomplish this, I'll build something of a mystery box that has no visible external hardware but provides a trick for the owner to retrieve the donations. So stay tuned to learn both about the inlay technique and the little trick that makes this a mystery box and makes it somewhat secure in case it contains some cash. To better understand the inlay technique and also to provide a reference for myself as I do this. I've created a document that I will share via a link in the description that has all the dimensions and such so as you're going through the video you don't need to remember those. But I think it's important to look at this figure to understand how this inlay technique is working. If you understand this figure, the rest of the uh, technique will fall into place. So let's say we want to make this sign here. This is an example I made for MAPS Air Museum. It has a piece of walnut that would be inlaid into a piece of oak. So where it says inlay up here, imagine that that is, let's say, one of these letters, the M, a piece of the M that's going to be inlaid down into this piece of oak that I've labeled the blank. The idea is that we first pocket what I'm calling the blank. We cut away uh, some space that we need for the walnut to fall into. And then the walnut is created as a mirror image to drop down into um, that piece of oak in this case. And there is a trick where we need to use a start depth when we make the inlay so that these pieces register properly along these angles that are created by the 60 degree V bit that we're using. To prepare the drawing and create the toolpaths for the inlay operation, I'll be using VCar Vectric desktop version 11.5. Uh, in this drawing you see I've got the outer perimeter of the maple material we're using, the outer boundary of the final box lid, the donation slot, and the lion head artwork. So the first operation we want to do is pocket out this lion. Uh, we'll select all of the vectors. We'll be using a start depth of zero, a flat depth of 150 thousandths, and a 60 degree V bit. Calculate those vectors. Uh, we see the lines here for the various uh, movements of the router bit. And if we head over to, well, we're in 3D, we'll reset the preview and preview the tool pass. Uh, so now we can see the, uh, what our, our pocket is gonna look like for the walnut that we wanna put down in there on the box lid. <laughs> Although the VCarve desktop software shows the pocketing operation in somewhat more detail, here's an actual short video clip of the CNC machine in action with that white side 60 degree V bit moving in the X and Y direction to form the line and also moving in the Z direction to create the sharp tips on parts of the mane of the lion. To do the actual walnut inlay, we're headed back to VCarve desktop and we're going to make two adjustments here to the artwork. Number one, we're going to mirror the lion so that he's facing in the other direction. I've also rotated him so that he goes along the grain direction. And I've created this boundary so that everything except the lion will be etched away and fit down inside of that pocket. So we'll uh, look at that. Uh, toolpath operation, select everything including the boundary, 
use the V-carve engraving toolpath. Now, unlike before, we have a start depth of one-tenth of an inch, which is going to give us the proper registration, and a flat depth of 50 thousandths. Go ahead and, oh, and we'll be using that 60 degree V-bit. Calculate that. See all the various uh, lines that the router bit's going to move, and then preview it. Here we see all of the pieces, parts of the walnut that are going to sit down inside of the maple and form our inlay. Here's a short video clip of the inlay machining operation. We're going to use that white side 60 degree V bit to machine the walnut inlay, removing all the material from the outer boundary into the pieces that will fit down inside the maple pocket. I'll be moving very quickly through the center of the video, speeding it up quite a bit, just to show a bit of the operation and the final result. Next, I'll cut away the backing material that would get in the way of us placing the inlay down inside the maple. Remember, I only put a quarter inch boundary around that inlay, so I'll get rid of everything outside of that quarter inch boundary with the jigsaw. Now that the parts are prepared, we're ready to glue up. We've got our pocketed lion, we've got our mirrored lion, and we use some uh, wood glue in both the pocket and also on the inlay. Because this piece has so much detail, it's very important to get glue onto every single piece because once we take the backing off there will be nothing holding them together again. So we'll get some glue sort of staged up here and actually where we want to glue is on the the V edges. It's not gonna it's actually not gonna touch the bottom but every side of every V is going to need to have some glue on it. So we use our acid brush Make sure we get lots of glue on every edge. So, might be a little overkill there, so I'll use some of that glue to start getting the edges on the inlay. And I'm going to speed this up a bit as we finish gluing, drop the walnut piece down into the maple, wipe off some excess glue and then clamp it down to the workbench good and tight to let it dry overnight. The next step is to remove the excess walnut material. I could do this with a drum sander if I could run this piece through, but I don't have one of those. I could use a planer, but that tends to rip out little pieces of walnut, which I don't want. So I'm just gonna use the CNC to face this off to the proper position where I can finish sanding it with an orbital sander. To do that, I will zero on the maple surface with my touch plate, which in my case automatically retracts to 5 eighths of an inch or 625 thousandths. So if I create a facing operation using this boundary, use a start depth of 400 thousandths, which is basically air, another 200 thousandths, which is a combination of air and some walnut, That'll leave 25 thousandths of this line projecting up that I will uh, finish off with a orbital sander. Here's a video clip back at the CNC. We're using a quarter inch end mill to remove most of the backing material that's uh, covering the lion walnut that's down in the maple. We're going to leave that 25 thousandths gap that we will be removing with an orbital sander in order to clean up the inlay at the end of this operation. So here goes with the orbital sander. We will remove that 25 thousandths of excess walnut and glue and try to get down just to the interface of the walnut maple and leave the lines as sharp as possible while getting rid of any of that residue from the gluing operation. Now with the inlay completed, we're ready for assembly. 
we've got our lid with the donation slot and the lion inlay and the OG border. The other pieces would be this base that has slots around the outside for the walls, as well as some spaces for these corner stiffeners, which will also be used to hold the, um, the lid on. Here's the walls here, these four walls. I'll be using this uh, strap clamp to hold everything while the glue is drying. And I've made this jig that I'll be using to locate some screws in the corners and holes for those screws that will be used to hold the lid on. So here goes. I use some wood glue down in those slots to hold the walls and to hold down the bottoms of the stiffeners. I'll put some glue on two sides of the stiffeners, place those in the corners, uh, stand that up with all the walls, wrestle it a little bit to get everything to fit. I'll use the uh, jig that I created to line everything up on the top side while I put the strap clamp around to hold everything together uh, while the glue dries and at the end of this operation we should have a box ready for us to prepare to put the top on and the associated screws and the, um, the keyhole slots that I'll be putting in the underside of the box lid to hold that on. Back in V-Carve desktop now let's look at the plan for holding the lid on the box. I could have used some hinges and a hasp and a lock since this is a donation box to make it secure but I thought I'd just sort of try to hide the uh, way that you get in and to do that imagine we're looking through from the top lid of the box on those stiffeners in the corners I'll put some screws that project up and then in the bottom of the lid I'll have these keyhole slots that should allow us to drop the lid on turn it to the right and lock it in place uh, so it will be non-obvious how to get in and also make a nice clean design on the outside without hinges and a hasp and all that kind of thing so to uh, see how that's going to look, let's highlight some tool paths, the cutout, some demos just to see what this is going to look like, the bevels, and let's go ahead and preview those visible tool paths. And we'll hop over to 3D, take care of the uh, waste material, and what we're left with is a view of what the underside of the box lid should look like. Again, I've expanded the access for where the screw heads are going to come and hit this because it won't be visible from the top. And they should slide into these undercuts and lock the lid in place. Back at the CNC, I'll do the beveling operation first using the point on the bit to establish my X and Y zeros and then doing this operation. Next, we'll swap out the 90 degree V bit for the undercut keyhole bit and create the keyhole slots at the four corners. And with that, the underside of the box lid is completed pretty much like it shows in the rendering. Next up, I've used a strap clamp to hold the template or the jig onto the top of the box so that I can accurately pre-drill 1 8 inch holes into the corners where the stiffeners are located. All that's left to do is to put four number 8 by 1 inch wood screws in each of the corners, leaving the heads about a quarter inch above the top of the box. Screw in the lid and check the fit and we're all good. Conveniently, we can make the box lid tighter or looser just by raising or lowering those screws just a bit. The box is fully assembled now with the lion inlay up on top. I've got some cotton strips, some nitrile gloves, and some wipe-on polyurethane, and we'll be putting the finish on the box. Finishing is not normally my favorite activity, but I do like to see how the walnut pops against the maple when we put this white blonde polyurethane finish on. The Lions Club donation box project is now pretty much complete. Uh, we can uh, make some donations here in the uh, donation slot. We can rotate off the box lid. 
retrieve the stuff that we put in the box, get the lid oriented, twist it a little bit, and then lock it in place. So that worked out pretty well, the whole twist on, twist off idea. Now let's go to the inlay. I think I've listed all the steps that will allow you to do an inlay such as this. In full disclosure, I do want to note that some of the areas of the main of the line, those very thin lines, did not fill completely. And it's worth noting that the blockier the artwork, uh, the better the project is going to turn out. For example, in these coasters that I made, here's one with a, a Baltimore Raven, which is Purple Heart inlaid in walnut. And then here's a, a Goodyear Wingfoot, which again is walnut inlaid in maple. And they're still fairly fine, but they've got a little bit blockier pattern, which is better for this inlay technique. So overall, pretty happy with how it turned out. I'd be interested in your comments down in the comments section. And you know the routine for like, describe, notifications, I won't go over that. Um, so basically I'd like to now thank you for watching and note that here in the upper left you'll see a video that is my latest upload and in the lower left you'll see a video that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. So thanks again for watching Flash Tracks Woodworking and we'll see you in the next episode.